a great miracle, Ryola T.F. R. It was a very cold day in the winter. It was storming outside and Leon was up in his room, looking outside from his room in the orphanage. The storm reminded him of everything he had lost on a similar day like this years ago. Leon was once a happy kid, born into a great family, had lots of great friends and even had some of his own pocket ilda copyright Monday. Leon's life was near perfect, but it all changed one night. Leon was lured away from his house into the forest by a scared little fletchling. Kind-hearted as Leon always is, he tried to find the little fletchling and comfort him. At the time he found the little fletchling, he heard a big explosion. When he turned around, he saw fire in the distance. Shocked by what he saw, he ran back in the direction he came from, hearing sirens from fire trucks. When he was back, he saw his house burning. Shocked by what he saw, he fell down on his knees crying. But he soon learned it wasn't just his house, the entire town was blown up. He and the fletchling were all that was left of the town of Lazuli. His mother, father, brother, his friends, his vulpix, his boink, even his Ryolu. Everyone was gone. He and the little flying type were rescued soon after, and given shelter. Leon learned the destruction of his hometown was caused by a mad arsonist that died in the fires. The authorities were forced to leave Leon and the Fletching at the Valor Town Orphanage. The Fletchling, that he decided to name Arrow, was his only friend. Leon didn't feel well with the other kids at the orphanage. They were bigger than him and always bullied him. Leon was joined by his little Fletchling friend when he looked outside his window picking on his hand to get his attention. What is it, Arrow? Leon asked. Arrow placed his head against Leon's chest, trying to make his friend feeling better. Oh, you just wanna cheer me up, thanks, Leon said, petting Arrow gently. Suddenly, Arrow started to make some noise and pointed outside with his beak. Leon looked outside. Near to forest's edge was a Ryolu, battered, burnt and in bad shape. Oh no, Arrow. We gotta help that pocket till the copyright Monday. Leon got bundled up. Arrow, in the jacket pocket, don't want you freezing your feathers off. And just like Leon said, Arrow obeyed, sitting in the pocket of the jacket, where it was warm and comfy for the little fletchling. Tilda. Leon rushed outside to the little Ryolu. Don't worry, you're gonna be okay. I'm here to help, he said picking up the Ryolu and carrying inside and back to his room. Leon pulled out a small heat lamp, provided by the caretakers, and turned it on. There, this plus the blanket will warm you up in no time. Then we can fix up those injuries, okay? The Ryolu simply nodded, wrapping itself in the provided blanket and sitting close to the heat lamp. After several minutes, the Ryolu was all warmed up and looked curious to Leon. Okay then. Leon gently picked up the pocket till the copyright moan and laid him on the bed. Just hold still, while I look at your injuries and try to figure out how I can help you. The Ryola nodded, being a little uneasy, but was comforted by Arrow. Okay, you've got some nasty burns here. What happened? Leon asked, like he could understand pocket till the copyright moan speech. The Ryola started making some gestures implying to Leon that it was hurt in an explosion years ago. An explosion? Could a broken bar you a broken bar? B? Leon said, awestruck, but the Ryolu cringing from the pain of its injuries snapped Leon back into treating the injuries first. After treating and bandaging his wounds and taking care of the little Ryolu, Leon fell in a gentle sleep. The Ryolu said to Arrow in pocket till the copyright moan speech. Ryolu asked. Arrow answered. The Ryolu simply smiled and watched to Leon as he slept. Tilda. That next morning, Leon slowly woke up. When he looked around he didn't find his fletchling. In the place he saw a beautiful talent flame standing next to his bed. What the? Arrow. Is that you? The amazed boy asked. The talent flame simply nodded as he flew up, landing on Leon's bed, next to him. Amazing. Congratulations, pal. Leon said, gently hugging his evolved friend. There's more, a voice said to Leon. Leon was surprised by the voice, looking to see the Ryola standing nearby. Huh? Did you broken bar did you say that? Leon asked, awestruck. Yep, but I think this guy's is no longer need. The Ryola was enveloped in a bright light. Soon enough, the light faded away and a Mew flew up. Much better. Boom. Your. Your. Mew? Yes, 
Leon, I am. I was always close and kept an eye on the two of you. Dot 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 really? Why? Leon asked curiously. After I saw what happened to you, I wanted to help you. Give you a new and better life. But before I could do, I needed to be sure that you were kind enough to deserve it. So, the injured Raiolu was a test. Mew nodded. Yes. Leon, and you passed the test. It also seems that Arrow also wanted to see you happy again and do everything to do so. That's why I used my powers to let her evolve. Wow. Now, I will grant you the gift of transformation, to allow you to become a Poketel to copyright Moan of your choice and start again. What Pokemon would you like to be? I Abro Kanbar I would like to become a Raiolu. Leon said, okay then. Hold still, Mew poured its magic into the boy. Wow, this feels great, Leon said, enjoying the warmth of the magic as soft black fur became to sprout and grow over his feet, his toes deforming and fusing together, leaving his with three toes on each foot. Soft yellow pads grow on the bottom of his feet, completing their changes into paws. The black fur the spread of his legs, making thinner and slightly longer. Then, a small adjustment of his leg bones left Leon standing merely on his toes. The shift to his toes caused Leon to becoming wobbly and unbalanced. He easily tripped and fell. Luckily, Arrow caught him. Thanks, Leon said, as Arrow sat him on the bed as his changes continued. When the fur reached his thighs, his body began to shift a little. The upper part of his leg shrank into his body costing him his knees. His hips soon began to round out on both sides, and the fur becoming blue as it covered them. Leon soon feels something growing as his spine extended, a small tail began to sprout and grow, coated with blue fur as it grew out to its proper length. Yay, I have a tail now, Leon exclaimed, looking at his new tail with joy. It quickly began to wag, showing Leon's happiness. How do you feel so far, Leon? Mew asked. I feel great. I really going to be a Raiolu. Thank you, Leon said gratefully. And no matter what happens, I will always stay by your side. Leon, Arrow said, revealing to Leon he could already understand Pake till the copyright Monday. The fur continued up his body, making him thinner. As it approached his chest, the fur resumed this black color form a zigzag pattern between the two colors. As the fur reached his neck, the fur changed colors again, this time being a light CR8 Ilda Diarisis Me color, coating his neck and form a sort of ring around it, before the blue fur began coating his arms, with white bumps grown from his upper wrists. As the fur coated his hands, his fingers deformed, and merged together, like his toes did. As Leon looked at his newly changed three-fingered hands, he watched as yellow pads grew on them, completing his new paws. Leon then watched the world around him grow as he shrank the proper Riolu size. Leon's excitement grew. He would soon be his favorite pocket till the copyright Monday. Almost there Leon, how do you feel? Arrow asked. I feel a broken bar great. Hey, now that I'm smaller, I can ride on your back, right? Yes. But don't get too hasty. Let's the transformation finish. Soon you and I can start a new life. You've been good to me, so I'll be doing the same to you. Thank you, Arrow. Leon said, rubbing Arrow's back with his new paws. Leon closed his eyes and the final changes began. His hair shrank and became blue fur, which then spread over his head. Black fur, however was also growing, shaping into a sort of mask around Leon's eyes and nose, which then pushed out into a small little muzzle. His ears shifted to the top of his head shrank a little, and took out a triangular shape. Finally, from where his ears used to be, Leon grew new appendages, two large-ish, black, tear-shaped appendages now hung from his head, on each side. With that, Leon's transformation was complete. He opened his eyes and took a good look at his new body. He was now an adorable little Raiolu. Leon was the happiest he'd even been in years now that he was a pocket till the copyright Monday. Well, Leon, like your new form? Yes, I love it, thank you. Da Leon soon stopped his sentence, as Mew looked at him straight in the eyes. Mew's eyes began swirling in a sea of colors. Leon's eyes soon mirrored this pattern. Leon was trapped in Mew's control. Now, let's not rush too much, right? Feel your eyes becoming heavier and heavier. Fall in a deep sleep, unable to resist. Leon's eyes gradually grew more and more heavy as he fell in a deep sleep. 
laying down in his bed, Tilda. A new day, the gentle rays of the sun shone through the window. Gently waking Leon up, the little Rayolu sat up, and found himself in a different place. When he looked around, he saw that his room was a little different than before. The walls had all kinds of pocket tilde copyright moan painted on it. Against the wall was a pocket tilde copyright ball-shaped clock. There was a small TV, some cushions before it and some plushies. Where we broken bar am I? Leon asked. Then, he heard the door to the room opening. He looked to see. Another Ryolu coming in. Leon, you're awake. It's good to see you doing okay all this time without me and everyone else. Mew, is it you again? Leon asked. No, it's me, Memoru. Remember? The Ryolu replied. Ma broken bar Memoru? Bout a broken bar didn't you a broken bar? We all did. But whatever who've done has gotten me and everyone else reborn. Those humans were reborn as Pake till the copyright Monday. Your parents are Lucario, and little Yukio's a cute little Ryolu like you and me, Memora said with a smile. And where is Arrow? Is she also here? Leon asked. Arrow. Is she that talent flame? Yes, I found her an all-broken bar that day. Your mom and dad got the story from her, and she's part of the family now. Leon jumped down from his bed and walked to Memora. So I guess we're brothers now. Leon said, yep, Memora said, hugging Leon, oh, and so you know, this is a new home created by Mew, we're in a small pocket dimension separated from Earth, it's a paradise for us, and everyone you knew and cared about, well, better explore this new world then, will you lead the way, brother, Bo, Bo, Leon, it's Christmas morning, mom and dad have presents and breakfast waiting, can't you smell those omelettes? Leon closed his eyes as he sniffed and smelled them. Omelettes with bacon, he said with glancing eyes. My favorite. What are we waiting for, brother? Take me to my parents, Tilda. Leon's eyes lit up, as he saw the Lucarios that were his parents. Morning Leon, thank you for giving us all a second chance, his mother said, retracting her chest spike and hugging Leon lovingly. Bo to broken bar why do you thank me for that? I didn't do anything. Leon answered, no lying. Leon, Mew told us how you proved to be a good boy, and earned us all a new life. His dad mentioned, when Leon's mother placed him down, Leon looked outside in the air, staring at the sun of his new dimension. Thank you, Mew, for everything. Come on, eat up sweetie. Arrow, Yukio, Memoru, Boing and Vivi are eager to open their presents. We've all been waiting on you, Leon's mother said. Leon nodded as he sat down at the breakfast table, next to Arrow and Memoru. Leon never had felt such great emotions all at once. Happiness, joy, relief, gratitude. He and everyone he know and cared for had been given another chance, thanks to him. And as he joined the others for Christmas presents, there was one thought was on his mind behind opening presents. Dot 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 thank you, Mew. Thank you for such a great miracle.